When I say Frontier Airlines, what do you picture? Frontier is what is known as an ultra low cost carrier. I was eager to try them, well, until I did. A combination of tiny seats, packed airplanes, and a developing winter storm quickly turned this plan upside down. Well, right now, due to poor weather and some stormy weather in the area, the airport's closed indefinitely for 45 minutes, and that is not a good thing. Hopefully the flight still ends up going, and this ends up going well. Right now it's starting to feel like that flight I took with American, where it was delayed for quite a few hours due to weather. Hopefully this doesn't end up much of the same. Yeah, this guy had no clue yet. It would. Our captain for today's flight up to DC called in sick. So we sat on the 737 MAX for about an hour, as they looked for a replacement captain to take the flight. Then this announcement happened. So the fun continues. We're being deplaned, we're heading back to the terminal. We've got a new departure time for 3.10 in the afternoon. Hopefully we get back on soon and... Departure time now has about slipped back by a full hour. Now we're on to hour two of this rolling now we're up to three. Hour four of fun. Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation, and today I've come back to the Detroit Metro Airport, as you can tell, and it's a snowy day. Today we're going to try to fly with Frontier Airlines. I tried to fly this route last night with Frontier from here in Detroit to Orlando, but because of all this nice, happy snow, it didn't work out so well. I'm gonna head inside because it's cold, but let's go and enjoy the video. Yeah, so regarding that winter storm, it was just crazy. Everything closed, everything was covered with snow, the airport couldn't even keep up with it. However, I did see one of Lufthansa's new 787s, which was cool. Although unfortunately, my fun would be short-lived, as our A320neo was diverted to Milwaukee. However, I did meet a nice girl, talk about the Boeing 747, and killed some time. Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 with the special Orca livery. Such a rare find, yes! Yeah, so the next day was a lot better. I saw this super cool Alaska Airlines 737. But I saw an A320neo land of Frontier, a good sign. Through security, quick and easy at Metro today, and yeah, so far everything's going better. Looks like we're actually gonna fly Frontier today. Let's hope. I then decided to check out the Evans Terminal, as it's known, which I'd never visited before, and do some more plane spotting. I also saw a Frontier A320neo head out, which made space for our airplane coming in soon, hopefully. But soon, however, our A320neo did appear, coming inbound from Milwaukee, where it had diverted the night before. I was so excited to see this airplane, as it meant something crucial would happen today. I'd actually get to fly on Frontier. Yes! Alright, so our plane is finally here. There it is, a six-year-old A320neo, November 305 Foxtrot Romeo. This is Cliff the Mountain Goat. You'd think after making trip reports for a while, I'd know how to scan my boarding pass, but that would be a no so far. Heading to Orlando finally after this super long delay. This is gonna be the longest delay I've ever had. I can't remember how many hours it is now, but I'll put it in the screen up above. First time flying on an A320 aircraft, and this is an A320neo, the newer fuel efficient version. Let's check her out. Soon, however, I boarded the A320neo, ready for anything. Hopefully that anything would be the right seat. I don't need any more stress in today's headache. There's no way around it. This is the smallest seat I've ever sat in on an airplane. However, for my purposes at 5'9", it wasn't too tiny. Although, if you're a bit taller and you're flying Frontier Airlines, you might want to opt for an exit row seat. I'd recommend that. My 5 foot 11 inch friend Jeb Brooks found it a little too small for his liking when he flew Frontier. 30F offered a microscopic 28 inches of pitch and 18 inches of width. It was tight. Frankly, I found the tray table to be laughable. But yeah, this seat was small as I previously mentioned. 
but I had enough legroom for my purposes at only 5 foot 9. And the headrest worked pretty well, although it doesn't have wings or adjust at all in any way. Pretty soon, however, I put my first world problems aside, we pushed back, started the engines, and got ready to head to the active runway. Thank you for choosing us to fly on today. In preparation for departure, please, be sure all carry-on items are stowed on the seat in front of me, and the stretch seats are... We also had a really long taxi out to the runway here at Detroit, so I sped it up for simplicity. Also, because it was so long, we burned a little more fuel than we originally estimated, according to Flight Radar. Also, if you like Detroit Metro Airport, check out my Inside Airports episode I made here recently, going behind the scenes of the operations at this incredible place. It truly was interesting, and I'll leave a link in the upper right. Pretty soon, however, we arrived at the turn-on point for the active runway, and our adventure was about to really begin. Here we go. Also, if you'd like to see the full takeoff and landing for this adventure, click the link in the upper right. Bye bye Detroit, not gonna miss your weather. Now that we're up in the air, Let's check out our flight path all the way to Orlando, Florida today. As we take off, we cross over Toledo, Ohio, and then we soon cross over Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Georgia, and then into northern Florida before dropping down into the central Florida area and descending into Orlando International Airport, taking us two hours and ten minutes to cover the 960 miles at 37,000 feet today. Once the seatbelt sign came off, I immediately went to check out the bathroom. Overall, it was pretty good, it had everything a bathroom needs, it was average sized, and honestly, not any smaller than its closest competitor, the 737 MAX, which gets its fair share of unneeded criticisms in my opinion. Now to talk about the elephant in the room, this tray table. It's tiny, very flimsy, as you can hear. And overall, it just kind of sucks. Unfortunately, the same can be said about the flimsy in-flight safety card and the seat back pocket. Despite its shortcomings, the seat still served my purposes, as I needed to catch a nap. And due to no in-flight entertainment also, by the way, that's just what I did. Whilst looking out the window, this is a reminder to subscribe to my channel, like, and ring that notification bell. I'd appreciate it. I then woke up from my much needed nap as we were descending into Orlando International Airport, so sorry about the footage quality in advance. Landing in Orlando felt so good, as I checked off flight 1 of 2 on Frontier Airlines. I also caught a glimpse of these National Airlines 747-400 BCFs. They rock. I'm so glad to see the 747 still flying in active service. By the way, keep an eye out for an upcoming flight on board a 747. I've also flown to Orlando Airport before, by the way, and links to those videos are on my channel, flying with American Airlines. Sorry, I forgot I put that alligator footage there. Sorry if it startled you like it startled me. Orlando has those, by the way, so keep an eye out. But soon we got off this Airbus A320neo and headed into the terminal in Orlando Airport. My favorite thing about this terminal? You have to ride a train to get to the main area, no matter who you're flying with. I know I've mentioned this before in my past videos to Orlando, but it just so cool, and I'm certainly going to miss it when it's gone.
Good morning. It's another beautiful day here in Orlando, and unfortunately, I have to go home. Today, I'll be flying home with Frontier Airlines from Orlando up to Detroit on an Airbus A320. I'll be comparing the A320 to its upgraded version, the A320neo, checking out the differences and finding out how good the Neo is versus the original A320. Let's go there now. Through security, quick and easy today, very, very lucky. The lines are huge. But now it's time to head to my gate, A15, and get this flight going. Let's go. A few days later, I saw another 747 up close this time, which was cool. And soon, I headed inside the airport, into the terminal, to catch my flight. I also saw a couple Spirit flights, more of those 747s, and a Silver Airways ATR-72600. Really cool. I've been upgraded to a exit row seat on the A320, so that's great. It means I won't be packed in so tight. And now I'm going to get back to the gate after having my breakfast I already had, and we'll get ready to go. Hopefully the flight still goes on time. But on the upside, I did get some cool Frontier Airlines sunglasses. I look pretty cool, right? But pretty soon I spotted our six-year-old Airbus A320, November 235 Foxtrot Romeo, Hello. Pike the Otter, and got ready to board. Alright, heading back to Detroit. Let's leave this warm weather behind, unfortunately. All joking aside, I really was looking forward to getting back on the plane and heading home to Detroit. This was also my first time on an A320CO. I thought it would be cool to compare the two, so here goes. The first thing I noticed was, well nothing. The seats seemed pretty much identical to those on the newer A320neo, and not much difference about them, so not much to say about them. I did, however, see Cliff, the A320neo that brought us to Orlando. So rare and super lucky. Also, the main difference I need to point out about the seat, my tray table was stored in the armrest. As I was in an exit row seat though, it meant I had extra space. I do, however, have more to say about the tray table, and I'll get to that later. In the meantime, I checked out their snack and drink menu. Once up in the air, I'll show you some more detail about the menu. Soon, however, our airplane began to fill up, I checked out my exit row duties, since I was seated in one, and pretty soon, our airplane got ready to go as we taxied out to the active runway here at Orlando. Also, I have to mention one thing. Check out A.S. Barrett Aviation. His YouTube channel is awesome, and he's a plane spotter here in Orlando, I believe. But soon our pilots engaged full thrust on this Airbus A320 as we headed down the runway, heading back for Detroit. Also, I'd like to mention again, full takeoff and landing footage can be found in the video link up above for both flights on today's adventure. Now that we're up in the air, let's take a look at today's flight path back up to Detroit. It's pretty simple. We head up out of Orlando, up over northern Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, and then dropping in into Detroit. Taking 2 hours and 30 minutes to cover the 960 miles to Detroit at 36,000 feet today. I then decided to check out the Wi-Fi on board Frontier, but wait, I forgot, they don't have any unfortunately. Also, here's a reminder to please like the video, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you know whenever my new videos come out. Thanks. Now on to my favorite part of any flight, the snacks, drinks, or food on board the plane. Overall, Frontier's menu was okay, it was perfectly adequate for my purposes of getting a snack, and overall, I thought it had plenty of choices, especially for a low-cost airline. It even had buzz balls of all things. My favorite part though, was this route map. But now on to the main event. I had chosen the Polar Bear Snack Bundle for today which included a snack, in my case cup noodles, and two drinks, apple and orange juice. Overall, I was pretty satisfied with it. The food even looked good, which shocked me on a low-cost airline, but it's hard to mess up cup noodles. This also set me back by $11, which I thought was quite a bit considering what I got. But overall, the food was pretty good, and I was a happy man.
After my snack, I decided to check out the bathroom on this Airbus A320. Overall, it was pretty similar to the Neo, however, it's a bit smaller, and I'm glad that the Neo made it a bit bigger. This was kinda small, including the tiny sink, which was ridiculous. But soon we began our descent into the Detroit metro area. We also passed over a large number of nuclear power plants along Detroit's western end. I was super impressed. These are so cool to see from the air. Now it's time for some reflection. This trip set me back $235 round trip from Detroit to Orlando, with two flights on Frontier. However, this did not include a checked bag. Keep that in mind if you fly with Frontier. I then checked out the cockpit on this Airbus A320, which was awesome. I then headed inside the terminal here at Detroit. Unfortunately, today's fun was over. Well, that was Frontier Airlines on their Airbus A320neo on the way down to Orlando, Florida, and right back up here on the A320CO. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed comparing Frontier Airlines airplanes, and it was super fun. But am I likely to fly Frontier again? Well, I would, honestly. It wasn't as bad as I heard, and it certainly wasn't as bad as some people make it seem. It got me from A to B, I got to try new airplanes like the A320neo, and I got a really cool cockpit picture at the end. Overall, I was happy, and it was a good flight. But you know the drill. As always, until next time, wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.